three, two, one. Tyra, Tyra, Tyra! You ever notice, like, when Tyra Banks starts out her show, she'll, like, besides the fact that she's just, just out of her mind, like, but it's beautiful to me, like, she does do stuff <laughs> that you really question, like, Tyra, really? Like, really, Tyra? And, uh, but it's okay, though. I mean, let that bitch be as crazy as she wants. She wants to help people, so fuck it. Let her do it. Right? Not, but it's just so funny to me, like, one thing that I just, I love Tyra Banks, and I loved her a lot more before I started kind of noticing, like, she claims that she wants to be the voice for women who are, who have unconventional beauty, you know, who, whose flaws make them more beautiful, and you know, she wants to make it her life's goal to help women feel more beautiful. But I can't help but notice, which, you know what, my dad told me, like, duh, like, wouldn't you help your own people the most if, uh, if you were in a position where you could? And I guess he's right. I mean, then again, I don't know if I have any people, you know? Like, I don't know if people are mine. I don't think that anybody really has people. But at the same time, who knows, right? Anyways, my point is, it seems like she's a lot harder on guests who are male, guests who are white, and guests, you know, who, uh, who just don't fit the standard of, of, like, you know, beauty. She says she unconventional beauty is beautiful. You know, she's had a couple um, top model shows, one where there was really petite girls and one where there were really big girls and the plus size, and it's like, how is that embracing everybody, though? That's only embracing the two extremes on both sides. What about for the people in the middle who, you know, aren't extremely, you know, big or aren't extremely tiny? I mean, what about us? <laughs> what about us? Not that I want to really be a model. I don't want people pulling and tugging on my shit. But, like, it's just the point of, of like, be real about it, you know? You don't gotta say that everybody's beautiful, cause Tyra, you know they're not. You know, be real about it, keep it real, you know, keep it realistic. You know, tell people, <laughs> tell people they don't got it. If they don't got it, I mean, it seems like you're always going for the underdog, like you're always voting for the underdog, which is great, or betting for the underdog, which is awesome. But it's kinda turned into like a whole, now it's the underdog versus the underdog versus the underdog, you know? And it's kind of become the, it's kind of became something that's quite depraved. And, uh, I don't know, a lot of the females that I see on that America's Next Top Model show, it seems like, I don't know if it's because they don't eat, or if it's because, like, maybe somebody's been telling them they're beautiful their entire lives, but I swear these bitches act, they act so unlike anything I would ever act like that I don't, I can't really even, like, put a grasp on, on how it is that they're, what, what the fuck it is they think they're doing, I mean, it's like, you see them having these opportunities of a lifetime, you know, you're on fucking America's Next Top Model, that's an opportunity of a lifetime, yet you're still gonna cry there like a little bitch about how you miss being at home, and you're still gonna cry like a bitch about everything they tell you to do, because that's not what you signed up for, and, I don't know, it just seems like most of the people in America who have any kind of stance in Hollywood or New York or any of these main major cities, it just seems as though these people act like, uh, you know, I don't like to be famous, but, uh, I am, you know, and, uh, it's, it's just so funny, it's like, like I said, like, no matter whatever, whatever would happen to me in my life, I would always keep it real, even if I had tons and tons and tons of money, and I lived, you know, in the nicest area, upper, up, uh, you know, upper east of Manhattan, or if I lived in Beverly Hills, you know, I mean, I would keep that shit real, I would probably still have the same furniture, <laughs> I'd probably still drive a shit car, you know, um, but I've been watching a lot of these, like, housewives of dot 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 whatever city, and it's kind of driving me crazy, but at the same time, 
I know that like philosophically, sociologically, existentially, whatever, I'm reaching out for like that, to just like, it's interesting to watch women for me. It's interesting for me to watch women in their day to day lives because I haven't had like any, a woman like role model in my life since I was about, you know, about 16 years old. And, uh, it's just, I guess, I guess, you know, I'm pulling from every venue that I can take from. Like, I'm helping my friend. He's an alcoholic, and he's going to these AA meetings. So I'm going with him because I want to help him out. But I also realize, like, it's kind of helping me out at the same time because I'm gaining perspective on other people's situations. And I'm learning that, you know, everybody hurts. Sometimes everybody cries. <laughs> so that's about that. And uh, other stuff in the in the works. There's so much Madame Rouge shit in the works. I'm so excited. It's going to be my birthday July 3rd. And I'm going to have a big Madame Rouge show. And Kettle One, the sponsor of the alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I am going to have a cool birthday party. I hope so. And um, I think that pretty much covers it except for, oh, shit, I forgot to read my writing. That's what you come here for, right? Well, first of all, I just want to show you this. This movie right here. My dad bought it for me. I really don't think he knew what we, what he was doing when he bought this. Since I grew up on horror movies, he, he just picked it out like as any other horror movie. And he thought that I would probably think it was good, which I probably would have if it wasn't so depraved and fucking <laughs> just gut-wrenching to watch. It's one of those movies where, like, the whole time it's playing, you're like this. Uh, but for some reason, you have to keep looking at it, because it's like a, a wreck. It's like a car, train, fucking plane, jet boat wreck. <laughs> it's, like, fucking crazy. But... I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend buying the movie. You can rent it, check it out, but, you know, this will be just one of the many horror movies that I collect that I probably won't watch more than once, but, you know, that's okay, too. Um, it, it feels really good to be getting back to doing this the way I did before my mom passed to see that time does heal a little bit, even if it's just a little bit. And, uh, to know that, you know, my future is so bright right now, and I'm so excited to be alive, to, to be able to do the things that I'm going to get to do, to be able to live the life that I'm going to be able to live, to be able to be the person that I'm going to be. And, you know, I think not having children and not getting married and, and waiting on those things was the best thing I could do. And my best advice, I, I'm going to wait longer. I'm going to wait as long as I can, as a matter of fact, you know. I think that this life should, like, you know, like religion, relationships, uh, all these things that, that are in life, they need to be in addition to and not in place of the truth and the love you find within yourself. You know, um, like, it's fine, you know, believe in whatever religion you want. Have a relationship with whoever you want to be with. But what happens is, is people put their faith into, into these things, and then they wonder why they don't get anything back from it. And it's because they didn't even take two seconds to get to know themselves as people enough to know that they can't replace, you know, the voids that they fill with money or people or drugs or, or religion or, or whatever it may be, you know? So that's all I say is that, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, I really recommend that it is in addition to the truth you already and the love that you already have for yourself. And on that note, I'll, rela uh, I'll relapse. <laughs> that's a good one. On that note, I will read in which... I talk about relapse, but that's not the point. Anyways, no relapse cause massive panic attacks at home. No, not at the disco. Stomach's empty is my intentions. I'm not a conventional, I'm invention. One dimension, I think not. Swallowing seeds just the stomach goes, 
little stomach knots, not butterflies. I guess I used to like them. Rushing, pacing in my brain with my two feet and painting just the same picture of me that I've painted so many times before. Diaf and hydramine. Got a better idea this time. Drugs suck. Suck drugs. Everyone does, know it or not. No ghost, please. I'm a bad hostess. I can't live in this dead city. Dead sea. Dead sea. Not hopeful, just knowing. We all wish that we were exempt from death. Hold up, take a breath, don't rest. If there's a spin in your head, don't test your own human limits. This life is too unsure to take chances like dancing with dinosaurs. I sit here, I beg for a sign or to be led to someone, something that will give me hope to cope. No cops and no cop and dope to smoke or poach, snort or shoot, drink or food. I think I've mentioned this to you. I need to move first if I want the first move I need ma to make magic I need the new tools Madame Rouge is a baker and she's not meaning to read anything like of this to you so don't fucking get mad uh, if you've already heard what I'm gonna say cuz uh, I'm not sure what I say what I read if I've already read it or uh, if I haven't so excuse me Excuse me for a second, sit here, I beg for a sign, or to be led to someone, something that will give me hope to cope, no cops and no cop and don't know, to smoke or poke, snort or shoot, drink or food, left-handed man, who stands so far above me, how am I lucky to have a dad who loves me, woo, he lives for love and supersedes any love I got from human being, he loves my brother, my mother, myself, he's touched every life he's ever contacted, wealth in a good way, rich in love and truth every day. I can only hope some wisdom is rubbed off logic. I know, love, easy. I'm funny like math, who needs it? I'll stick to statistics. Oh, that involves math? Not when, <laughs> not when it's in my realm. I have my two scales, left and right, live and die, dark and light. Go ahead and try. I think you'll find peculiar things that you might mind. Please do, just live your life. Let nothing take that from you, because it's your time. My time, the time of gen generational gaps. Teen moms, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And what I've noticed the most is the wanting to go back. No matter how different we might feel, we can always rely on that, the wanting to go back. And what would we do then if we could relive the times that we were thinking? We would, would we do things different? Why can't we look forward to new old times? I mean, living in the now so you can look back on life instead of constantly looking back and only facing now when someone grabs you and says, hey, reality's in town. I hear it's a bomb show with good sound, or dollar signs can snap can snap you out of that little tizzy, tussy, bow down hussy, clowning the fake and fussy, old enough but still wearing huggies, like middle age but still sucking on teats, I'm, con I'm just confused, guess I never needed to use someone's body for my own pleasure since I've been with you, maybe I'm crazy for not having have touched anyone but you still to this day maybe I'm just more aware more aware than there more intact than how I act more of a wild child less of a total tool like you letting yourself be used by any bitch with some holes and self-esteem issues so before we run go calling people names that imply that they're spreading their legs maybe we should look in the mirror and say hey the only evidence I have of people doing lurid acts are the ones in my head that I've played out in real life in fact if I were her, I wouldn't like me either, right? That's right. It's not a question of what I do when I get sick, when I look at you. It lies, me, truth, proof that I have control of myself. Fuck everyone else. I met the love of my life, the one of my dreams, the day I decided to get to know me. Christians are such opportunists. Sometimes that's a good thing, but not in a Charles Stanley way. If you see someone in pain... That's the prime opportunity to tell them about Jesus and how Jesus can help them. Now, I'm changing the subject here to this real quick. And, dang, how slick is that? Have you ever seen anybody do spoken word poetry and peel out their contacts at the same time? Damn, I'm slick. That was good to me. Anyways, Charles Stanley, this old guy who comes on uh, analog TV at about 4 a.m., to remind me, you know, how cool uh, organized religion is. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He said, if you see someone in pain, that's the prime opportunity to tell them about Jesus and how they can help him.
Now instead of me explaining this, because I have explained it a million times, I'll just read a little bit on my thoughts on this. So I see this quote as, you see someone in pain, that is a prime opportunity to tell them about Jesus and how they can help him as, aka, pray on the weak while they're weak, because only the weak need us. Charles Stanley, go fucking count your money. Stay busy for a long while. Keep things like words out of your mouth. You're old enough to know better, but evil enough to pretend that you're better than that. Charles Stanley, you are the anti-truth. You are the anti-Kerouac, Burroughs, and Carlin. You are the anti-Henry Rollins. You are the anti-intelligence. You are an opportunist in the worst of ways, and you pull it off well. In terms for the weak and meager, the dumb and eager, the desperate, let's look at this logically. Evil is a half of a perfect sphere. The more you fight it, try to deny it, the more you become it. So thank you, Charles Stanley. You are a part of half of perfection, the dark and the light are those who know that if God's voice were supposed to be heard, it would happen something more like the movie Dogma, and you're not supposed to hear it anyways. Thank you, everybody. This ra thus wraps up a new episode of the Madame Rue show. Before I go, I wanted to remember to say hello to my 12-year-old super fan, Jill. Hi, Jill. Yes, I know you're watching. And you know what? I love you. Take care of yourself. Take care of your mom. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to you soon, honey. All right. Take care of yourself.